responses around uh, in the following 24 hours, um, but also with a link to a recording of the session as well. So please feel free to share that recording um, or revisit yourselves if any of you need to shoot off at any point. So today's webinar is to give you a high-level introduction to Diligent Messenger. Uh, Messenger is a new uh, module to our core product Diligent Boards, which we've introduced during the course of the last six months. Uh, we're starting to find a variety of different use cases for, uh, for Diligent Messenger. Um, typically, the reason why uh, we have identified a requirement for it is due to the fact that um, our key product Diligent Boards, our board portal, is responsible for um, the delivery of sensitive information to senior executives and board members. They conduct a meeting, they have a board present, uh, so they have a they conduct a meeting, the minutes are signed off. Uh, the information is communicated very clearly and, and very, uh, very securely through the system. However, outside of that boardroom, month to month or quarter to quarter, we've identified that there's a lot of communication that will occur between senior executives, board members, and in addition to that, people external to these specific groups. And over 30% of our existing client base of more than 150,000 global board directors and executives were using free email. The highest one is you should be able to see there on the slide, Gmail. Gmail, as many of you I'm sure are aware, is owned by Google, and any information that is sent through Google is therefore owned by Google. And I think it's fair to say that that's, that's fairly indefinitely. Of the 100,000 uh, remaining directors that do not use a free email, we've identified that they're actually using a corporate email of some form, either from the, uh, the company which they have their directorship or perhaps the, the company where they may work. And of course, corporate email, although perhaps the exchange servers have uh, perhaps more control of security for the organization, many of them are, of course, uh, blessed with many of the same security risks. And that's obviously what we want to talk about uh, a little bit today. It's now evident that many of the stolen Gmail and Yahoo email account credentials um, are actually for sale on the so-called dark web, posing a massive threat to, to global corporate security. Just one example of this um, was identified through some research that Diligent did themselves. Um, there was a username by the name of Sun TZU583, reportedly selling 100,000 Yahoo accounts and their credentials. Um, and that was actually from the last data breach in 2012, last FM. Um, during that data breach, 43 million accounts were compromised. Um, the information was for sale for, uh, wait for it, 0 0.0079 bitcoins, which um, in our Aussie dollars today transfer to uh, 10 bucks 75 cents. Um, so I'm sure you can understand there that, of course, a lot of the information within those accounts could have some pretty serious repercussions for, uh, for many of the, uh, the organizations involved in that breach. The real risk for boards is essentially relying on personal or corporate email for sensitive information. Most people will use as well the same username and password for logging onto multiple systems. Uh, it just takes something as easy as malware to uh, access those credentials, and before you know it, the whole world's uh, potentially opened up. Um, and not only that, of course, access to secure um, and sensitive information. Um, many of the businesses we are talking to um, in diligence in the cybersecurity space are actually also failing to implement some form of two-factor authentication, um, requiring password changes, despite the fact that this would eliminate a lot of the security risks. Um, just to kind of give you a bit of a flavor, some of the things that we're doing with our core products and also diligent messenger is to activate something called device authentication. So let's just say for the purpose of the conversation, a board member or an executive has same username, the same password for everything, and somewhere through maybe a social media account and information is breached, with Diligent, they can only access the information via one of the devices that we've actually assigned to their profile. So there's many things we're doing um, out of the ordinary, which um, I think is, is, is certainly um, you know, some of the key points that we really want to kind of bring to the forefront of your mind today. Some of the examples that we've seen in the media over the past few years um, are showing really a, a generic um, sort of trend um, and essentially uh, need to move into the cyber security space. Um, just on the screen here, we've got a few case studies, a few examples of actually a number of press releases which have been um, launched in the last 12 months. Uh, many of these, um, I mentioned before a, a breach with the IHU that occurred in 2012. You can see here 
Um, just there on the top right, Yahoo, um, Yahoo, sorry, disclosed an attack uh, back in 2007, sorry, 2013, in which over one billion of their uh, their users were compromised. That didn't actually hit the news for the general public until just about three months ago. So I guess one of the things to start thinking about is um, what's actually happened in recent events. Where is our information right now? Is it compromised, and what do we need to be doing to to try and eliminate that? Um, for those of you that uh, that haven't heard of uh, the big one with Salesforce, there was a leaked email case study from a former Secretary of State, Colin Powell, who has served on the board of Salesforce.com since 2014. Uh, back in October of last year, um, there were a number of emails that were compromised which contained um, some extensive information that related to um, a lot of the merger and acquisition, um, I, I guess, sort of plans that that organisation had, including a 60-slide present presentation, which um, actually listed uh, many of the companies that Salesforce had got their eyes on for acquisitions, um, some of the, the highest prices that they'd be prepared to pay. Um, Powell had access to, um, to the email because he was a board member, um, and I guess some of the things to think about here are what are the financial um, and also reputational repercussions for organizations when that type of things occur. Um, Yahoo have um, revealed that thousands of Australian government officials, including high profile politicians and senior defense officials, were among the one billion victims um, of that breach that I mentioned to you before. And again, I guess this is just a demonstration. This is not just a, glo you know, not just a global problem. It really, hit really hits home here in Australia. Um, again, it shows the severity of the accounts being compromised. Um, this occurred again back in 2013. It was only three months ago that, that we realised. And so, you know, for, the, for us, you know, these are all big red flags that we're starting to talk to people about in our everyday communications. So I guess um, on the back of that, let's take a look at the reality of what happens when you use both free and, and corporate email. And let's look at what this cost has been for corporations around the globe. Um, a question that I quite often ask clients when I'm out talking to them is, does your IT department have access um, and the ability to reset a password to an exchange account for a senior executive? Um, it's, you know, again, something to think about. A lot of the, uh, the breaches that occur for large enterprise organizations um, are actually internal threats as well. In Australia, the average cost of a data breach, believe it or not, is $2.64 million. This is according to um, an IBM study. The biggest financial consequence to organizations that experience a data breach um, is, is pretty straightforward, it's loss of business. Following a data breach, um, organizations need to take steps to retain their customer's trust, to, return, to reduce the long-term financial and again, the reputational impacts of these breaches. Um, most breaches are of course caused by some form of criminal or malicious attack. Uh, we do also need to consider, however, you know, I'm sure that we've all been the victim of this once or twice, where well, we forward an email to the wrong person, we've typed in the first, um, you know, first few letters of the credentials, hit enter, hit send, and then um, more often than not, we don't even realise until every now and then that person responds and says, "I don't think this was meant for me." So these are all the things that are sort of, I guess, out of your control. And the industries that tend to be most effective um, are the most regulated industries, um, and these include, of course, healthcare, financial services. Uh, but generally will have higher, um, you know, implications with relation to increased penalty rates um, due to the stricter guidelines that are in place. Um, so just moving forward, let's take a look at Diligent Messenger. Let's, you know, obviously, we've provided you there with, um, I, I guess, I think it's fair to say, a number of facts that would relate to email, um, which is really the biggest competitor of our Diligent Messenger application. Um, Messenger has been introduced so that um, enterprise level organizations can rest assured that they have end-to-end -end control of their information. The bottom line is that, um, you know, in this day and age, it's 2017, we are living in an extremely vulnerable cyber security world. And the financial repercussions for information being breached, um, as I'm sure you'll all agree, are, are going to be reasonably significant. Diligent provides um, Messenger to enable our clients to have simple, secure messaging that executives will want to use. And in addition, it doesn't just stop at the executives. Of course, board members, people at external parties, such as uh, perhaps people we're negotiating with from an acquisition company, there may be lawyers, there may be, uh, we've had examples within our own organization of sporting teams that have had um, a couple of scandals or certain players that haven't um, you know, been uh, 
you know, representing them well. We need to discuss media releases. Um, and I cannot tell you how many times I've gone into a meeting where somebody has told me that information from one of our board members is being leaked into the media. And more often than not, you know, I do argue this may not be the case. And, you know, unless you've got absolute control and facts around the security of the email that you've been using, the reality is that um, you really just don't know where that, where that breach is coming from. So what does Messenger do? Again, it provides the ability to communicate in a fully enclosed, safeguarded environment. All the data is encrypted end to end. Messengers are basically sent using um, the messenger tool and its intuitive interface, um, but protected by the same best in class security infrastructure and encrypted standards that Diligent Boards um, um, provides its clients in its core product. Um, we as a company are an ISO 27 and 1000 certified um, organization. And for those of you not familiar with that, that is the gold standard for information security. Messages can be retracted. So I mentioned before the situation where we, we shoot out an email to somebody, we realize that it's gone to the wrong person. Uh, perhaps you know we lost our trail of thought, we were thinking about something, can we send it to them instead of to somebody else? Uh, again, I think we've all perhaps been victims of that once or twice in our life. So the idea of Messenger is that again, you have that end-to-end -end control. The author of the message is able to retract um, the, the message, the attachment that they've sent at any point with a simple swipe that provides them with uh, with an undo function. Messages are also tightly contained. Uh, because you're the only, because users are only authenticated to either the board or messenger site, you control who the potential recipients are. So worst, worst case scenario in our application, um, and coming in with a, with a slight negative here, is that if somebody were to send something to the wrong person, that is certainly restricted to the users that you've populated within your messenger site. And once again, if we do send the document or the message to the wrong person, we can retract that back um, and we can immediately encrypt that retraction um, and permanently delete it, uh, meaning that there's no um, permanent footprint, which of course is the case with email. One of the things that a lot of our clients are, um, are talking to us about is, is where Messenger can, uh, where it's going to go and, and what it's going to do. And I think one of the key things that we've always been um, very focused on as an organization is keeping things intuitive, keeping them simple and making sure that despite the fact people aren't using the tool every day, they are able to just pick it up as and when required and use it without thinking. So from your point of view, you're providing a solution that provides that security. It provides the ability for uh, people to communicate within a, a core solution um, in a closed off environment. It's not a solution that we're going to overcomplicate. It's something which has a very simple need. It is a cybersecurity simple messaging tool. Some of the use cases I've touched on already, other use cases that we're aware of, um, you know, perhaps prior to the, the collation of board papers and, um, and their subsequent reports um, and, and committees, they, they go via approval processes with senior executives, more often than not, for example, the chief executive. Um, Messenger is a great way of um, tracking changes in a secure environment, getting those approvals, and, and, and I guess, again, streamlining that whole process. Um, one of the things that we're finding with, uh, with Messenger is that um, as opposed to the board secretary and the governance um, sort of contacts that we have, um, a lot of the larger enterprise organizations um, are implementing a cybersecurity risk plan. Uh, we're finding that more and more um, organizations are implementing um, or appointing a chief information security officer. Um, I think boards are becoming more aware of the fact that they need somebody with the expertise to assist should the event of a cyber attack occur for their organization. Um, and I think, you know, from messenger point of view, it just provides that one-stop shop. It provides that level of reassurance um, and it provides that, um, that ability for anybody to just pick it up and use it without it being complicated. Once again, we're not just restricting this to your executives and your board members. Um, you know, some of the smallest clients that we have will typically have a, a board of three or four um, external board members, a couple of executives, there may only be five people. As a bare minimum, Diligent will provide you with 20 licenses. We do not believe, although we offer unlimited training, that everybody will require training. It is very similar to other applications 
uh, that offer similar functionalities without the security. So from your point of view, you'll have that flexibility to evolve this um, internally and externally over time. You can swap and change those licenses at no cost, should you wish. Um, and once again, diligence focus is really to provide a bit of a one-stop shop for all of your, um, your governance needs. So that really kind of wraps me up to the, um, to the end of the, uh, the introduction today. Um, we have obviously been monitoring um, in the webinar software here um, a number of questions that have come through. Um, and I'm actually just going to um, place you back over to my colleague, um, Kelly, that's been, um, been working through these during the course of the last 15, 20 minutes. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, we will now go to your questions and try and answer as many as possible. Uh, any questions we actually don't get to, we'll provide answers to you guys in an email after the webinar. So I've got a few questions that have come through now. Um, yes, the first one is, what reassurances can you provide around the level of security you have around Messenger? Okay, so we've been talking a lot around the fact that Messenger is a secure alternative to email. Um, I guess the question that's being asked here is, um, how can we back that up and, and provide you the reassurance that the product um, that we're looking to, to sell um, will give you the security that, you're, that you need? So first of all, um, Messenger is included um, within the same environment as the core product Diligent boards. So for those of you that currently use Diligent, which I believe is, is actually more than 75% of the, the, uh, the attendees on the webinar today, um, each of you will have a site. For those of you that aren't familiar with Diligent, um, this is essentially a secure encrypted database which each and every single one of our clients has. It's built from the ground up and nobody has anything, any access to anything inside including Diligent and its employees. All the information is encrypted end to end, at rest and in transit. A messenger will basically be applied to uh, the software that we've already created for you. Uh, essentially, um, to give you some reassurance here in Australia, Diligent now supports 54 ASX 100 boards, uh, many of those in the top ASX 20. And of course, um, outside of that, we actually now support more than 700 other clients, many of whom have gone through some pretty extensive research and, uh, and security reviews to ensure that the most sensitive information that they have is safe, it's secure, and it's also kept within a cloud service which is compliant for their respective industry um, or organization. So from our point of view, we are providing you the same level of IT security infrastructure that we are with our core product diligent boards. And of course, um, it's a very large open question and perhaps a, a very sort of scattered answer. Um, for those of you that are interested, we'd be happy to provide some more information around the, the security of Diligent in a simple two-page uh, PDF document which we can circulate out. So if you are interested in any of the security components, um, please just shoot us a message now in the chat with your email. Um, maybe just put a star in face security um, and we'll make sure that we email that through to you. Any more questions there, Kelly? Um, that was great. Thank you, Chris. Um, yeah, we do actually have, uh, we have two more that I think we have time to get through today. Um, so the second one was, can people who do not access uh, your board portal access Messenger? Okay, yeah, look, I have um, touched on this a couple of times, but I just want to be absolutely crystal clear on the fact that the, the idea of providing a block of 20 users as a bare minimum for Messenger is for this exact reason. Um, yes, a lot of the communication that occurs in Messenger is going to be internal communication uh, that externally may go as far as your board members. If we're a public company, um, you know, we're a private company, we're going to be looking at things such as mergers acquisition. The idea of Messenger is that we can temporarily provide access to the application to people who are perhaps involved in negotiations. Um, once again, it may be that we want to communicate our offers and counter offers to the various executives um, from those companies that we're looking at, um, at acquiring. So the idea of diligent Messenger is to absolutely contain the information with those that need to communicate with um, our organizations. And more often than not, we'll actually find that the board, the senior executives, and perhaps a, a handful of project people will also be um, suitable candidates for the licenses. All right, and the uh, last question, does it send notifications when new messages have been sent? And does that integrate with diligent boards? Okay, yeah, good question. Um, so in actual fact, yes, it does. Um, we, 
the idea of Messenger, is, let's just say for those of you that, that work with iPhones, as I think the vast majority of people do, is you will actually receive a push notification it kind of comes up um, a bit like a text message on your phone, but it won't display any of the content of the message. Um, so what we've done is we've actually created a tool so that if you're the board secretary or the administrator responsible for the uploading of content into our diligent board's product, um, you can actually automate um, a notification. There's actually a separate feature for this exact purpose. So for those of you that do currently use diligent, um, if you apply Messenger to your package, the, you know, the, the ability to sort of streamline that communication, not just with the initial upload, but with any late papers, any circular resolutions, maybe just a champion when you need to sign up for the minutes, for example. Um, it's, yeah, it's basically, again, um, just there to sort of plug in and streamline with the existing workflow. So um, we'd be very happy to, to demonstrate to anyone be interested in seeing that feature. Um, once again, it's, it's a simple thing, but it's a very specific feature that we thought um, would, would have a strong requirement for. Right, thank you very much, Chris. Um, we've actually just run out of time, so we just wanted to say thank you for all your questions, and we will send responses to any questions we didn't get through uh, today in an email after the webinar. Thank you very much for your time today, and we hope you enjoy the webinar. Thank you.